Welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be continuing on with my Atari 2600 versus the Intellivision series and we're still in the Parker Brothers titles and so the last video I did was Frogger which was a very popular arcade title. Um, both games were fairly good. Uh, you know I got you know some people saying they like the Atari versus they, they didn't like the Intellivision and vice versa. So this one is now Popeye. Um, and Popeye, of course, was a popular comic, it was a movie, it was like a full-on cartoon. I mean, there's been a lot of Popeye over the years. And, uh, you know, even in the 80s there was like a board game, there was a whole bunch of stuff that, to go along with this, with this video game. Of course, it started off as an arcade game, and the story is that originally um, the creator wanted to do, make a Popeye game, but he couldn't get the rights or something like that, and ended up making what we all know is today is Donkey Kong but it's the same kind of idea you got the big guy at the top you got the girl uh, that he's kind of keeping captive and you got your little hero who has to save the day um, you know it's also a ladder climbing game anyways both versions of, of this one you know for the Atari and the Intellivision I think they're, they're very different in their own ways and they're both quite interesting uh, when you play them so Let's get around to the Atari 2600 first, and then we'll jump into the Intellivision. Okay, so we got the game up. Um, so yeah, nice colorful game. I mean, you can see a lot going on there. Uh, there's no start uh, title screen. Um, same with Frogger, there was no title screen. It was really just, you know, the, the, uh, the game itself. But that's okay, that's fine. So let, let's get to how the game plays. Okay, so we can really see hear the sound of the, uh, you know, the Popeye kind of song, um, and it, it does have the background music, which uh, for a lot of Atari 2600 games, um, you didn't know often get a uh, get any kind of soundtrack playing in the background while you played the game. I think a lot of it had to do with cutting back on on programming. Uh, or, or uh, cartridge space because um, you know it does take up a lot more to have a game that has any kind of repeating noises or sound effects plus music going on in the background oh geez that was not good um, but the characters I mean you can make out Popeye you can kind of see him there uh, he's a solid color which you know it looks like all the characters are solid colors uh, we got olive oil there at the top throwing down those hearts uh, and that's um, Bluto or Brutus uh, I believe he was known as both <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure on the history of that but uh, from what I understand he had uh, he had two names <laughs> so I guess if you had the instruction manual it would probably tell you which one they're calling him and so the object of this first level is to collect those hearts that um, olive oil is throwing down uh, before they hit the water because if they hit the water the, the heart drowns and then you lose a, a Popeye. Uh oh I'm in trouble now. He's guarding that one. Oh good he left. So as far as mimicking the arcade I think he did a pretty good job. Let's get the spinach and beat up Brutal, Brutus, Brutus. There you go. Punched him off the screen. You see, that's good that you can actually get that little bit of a power boost. The only problem is that um, the uh, hearts stop falling at that point. I mean, you can freeze them in time and then go and collect them, but no more will fall while you have that spinach going on. But aside from that, I mean, the game is it's playable. It, it does feel like I'm playing Popeye. It's not like it's it's completely off and <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there is the absence of that. Um, there, there's usually a basket there in the middle. It will be above me right now. Uh, so that's missing from this version. That's okay. So now we're on the second level. I believe this one's a, it's similar to the arcade one. Uh, so on this one, you actually have to catch the music notes. Um, 
mean, the, the graphics for the music notes are a little bit off. Um, kind of make it out. Ah, he got me before I got off the screen. The thing I like about this game is that you don't have to start over every time you you get hit. <laughs> you don't have to start over all the, all the uh, you know, parts or music notes over and over and over again. I believe you can go on a springboard here. Now I do believe that that's where this game differs from the arcade. Um, I don't think in the arcade there's a springboard on both sides. Oops. I'm gonna have to get down there. Also, uh, I just noticed too that there's no sound to indicate that um, something is going into the water. You see it's blinking, but in some versions of this game, the the sound effect changes to, to let you know. There we go. The sound effect kind of changes a little bit to, to kind of give you that audio warning that something is happening. and. Uh, you know, in this one, you, you kind of have to just pay attention. You have to look down, you have to make sure nothing's about to uh, fall into the water. So what I'm doing there is he's throwing... I'm not sure exactly what he's throwing. He's throwing something. <laughs> Some kind of cans of something. Uh-oh. I'll have to get down there before that one. Oh, no! And you got to punch those things before... Ah, uh, it, it drowned. You gotta punch those things that he's throwing at you, so you gotta look out. Just need one more. Ah, oh, throw it my way. And as you notice, there's no jump. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna lose. So we skipped over, and we're never going to check out the third level. Um, yeah. I mean, so you're on a boat. Uh, I guess this is Popeye's boat. <laughs> and now she's throwing those little X's. <laughs> oh, no! And I lost. But at least, you know, we got to see what the boat level looked like. This is a hard game, actually. Okay. So now we got the Popeye for the Intellivision. You can see that the music is uh, pretty spot on there. Uh, we have a nice blue screen. Parker Brothers presents Popeye. I would have liked to see a graphic or something of Popeye. You know, it's, it's too bad some of these starter screens for the Intellivision were kind of blasé. But anyways, let's uh, let's move on to the to the game. So we want one player. I guess we're gonna go with level one. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, you can see Popeye there. Okay, so it's got the basket up up there. Oh, ooh, that's coming right after me. Um, but yeah, definitely a much different looking game. Oh, jeez, he just charged right at me there. So olive oil is a solid green, uh, but Popeye and Bluto are kind of colorful. We got that basket, like I said, so we can actually hit... Oh. Now there's that sound effect I was talking about for the Atari one that's kind of missing. Uh, just that audio clue that, that one of the hearts is about to sink. I don't know, I'm finding this one a little bit harder to control. Uh, Popeye seems to be moving at a really sporadic rate. <laughs> This is just the, uh, the way I'm playing it, uh, the uh, file I have for it, but something just seems a little bit sluggish. Well, that was kind of fun. <laughs> this punching looks a little bit weird. But you can make out the hearts. 
Uh, you can make it to level. Level, I mean, it's okay. It's a, it's a pretty typical looking Intellivision level board. Or... That's those things that are appearing. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Oh. Crazy sound effects, though. Let's see what happens if I get the spinach. Oh, getting down those stairs is weird. I'm gonna wait for a couple of hearts to come and see what happens. Uh, never mind. I'm <laughs> just gonna go after him. Oh, that was pretty interesting. Uh, so again, it stuns the heart. Now I'm starting to wonder if that's how it is in the arcade. It's been, been a little bit of time since I played that one. We got our basket back at the top there. Oh no! See how the house kind of kind of fills in red. It's not showing the hearts. It's just filling in red. That's a little bit different. Looks like I just need to get one one more heart. I don't know if that sound. I guess that's supposed to be Brutus or Bluto making noises. I guess. The stairs at the bottom look a little bit weird. Actually, all the stairs look weird. Okay, so now we're on this. Uh, so the layout looks a little bit more like the arcade. Uh, you can see the music notes. Looks nice. And the springboard is, is uh, a little bit more like the arcade as well. We're gonna jump on that. Oh, and he just kicked me in the head. Never said these games were easy. <laughs> I find the, uh, the graphics are a little bit overwhelming in this one. Um, it's just too much. It's too much happening. And... I don't know what it is. Go kick his butt. The only da downside about this game is, is you only get the one spinach um, per level. So once you use it, that's it. Uh... <laughs> Other than that, it's just a little bit of patience to make sure that you uh, avoid Brutal, Brutal, Brutus, whatever his name is. Brutus, Bluto, Bluto. As long as you <laughs> avoid him. Just pay attention to those things falling from the sky. Oh no! Game over. Okay, so I had to skip again. This game is not easy. <laughs> well, let's check out what the boat looks like. Okay, so now it actually, you know, you can make that out. You can see that that looks like a pirate ship of some sort. <laughs> There's the anchor. So now the, um, I believe what's falling from the sky now is, is the letters, uh, help. Got that little thing you can go across, that's really cool. But same idea, you got to, oh, I better, oh, I'm stuck, come on. I'm just gonna get the spinach, cause I just, I need to suspend those pieces. Whew. Yeah, so you're building, uh, oh, they're, sorry, they're ladder pieces. Think. So you're building up that ladder. It spells out help. But each ladder you get, it builds up that little ladder in the center there. This board's a little bit trickier. Oh. It's very yellow. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. A lot, of, a lot of yellow and red in this level. Uh, strains the eyes sometimes. Oh no, I didn't see that. Trying to get that H. <laughs> ah. Controls are a little, oh crap, a little bit more wonkier in this one. That's for sure. Oh, <laughs> no! 
Oh, it's stuck on the ladder again. Ah, oh, not again. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, that took me a little bit of time to, to actually play through both of those games. Surprisingly hard. Um, you know, I, I was making it to the second level all the time, but then on that second level, it's just, I mean, the way that the level platforms are designed. Um, I found the Intellivision one to be, you know, I, I guess the controls were, were sticky. Sometimes, you know, I, I would push down and he wouldn't move. Or I'd try and go up a staircase, he'd stand there. Uh, and in games like these, you really need the, the slick controls or else you're going to die to things like those bottles that are being thrown and, uh, you know, you know, even just Brutus or Bluto himself coming after you. Uh, I felt in the t in television one, too, he kept charging at you. Um, the Atari one, he jumped quite a bit, but there was a lot of times in the Atari 2600 version where he, he seemed like he was just more off on his own little, you know, spot and he was not bothering with me. Um, the Intellivision one just felt like he was constantly charging after me. Uh, and so you really got to be paying attention to him more than you got to be paying attention to everything else. Uh, which does make the game hard because there's so much happening. You got the, the stuff falling from the skies. You got those, uh, I don't know what it is that appears on the side there that, that throws bottles at you. And then you got, you know, just the level complexity of itself. But that's just the way the game was designed. I mean, that's, I know the arcade is just as hard. In fact, it's probably even harder. You know, it's been a long time since I actually pl played the arcade version, um, and I remember it was challenging then. Of course, my, my experience is with the game originated from, again, the Commodore 64, which I've said a lot. Anyways, I, I don't really know. You know, I, I like the graphics of the Intellivision for some parts of it. I found that other parts of the graphics in the Intellivision were a little bit too... I think they just tried too hard to make it look nice, and it just blended in together. Uh, some of the things like the steps didn't look right. The Atari was great. The characters, you, you know, a little bit off. Uh, it'd be nice to see Popeye have a little bit more color, uh, just like he did in the uh, in television one, you know, having the white and all that stuff. And um, Olive oil was kind of the same on both. Uh, it was just a solid green or whatever, uh, you know, just solid color. Uh, other than that, the controls on the Atari 2600 were great. In fact, you know, I'm just going to say that both of these these games had their ups and downs. I mean, it's almost like a draw to me, where I like the Atari one for, you know, some parts of it, but the Intellivision one does give you a little bit more of the arcade feel. Anyways, those are just what I, I think. Those are my thoughts. I always like to hear what you have to say. It's been ported on other systems. You know, it's on the Nintendo. I played it on the Commodore 64. It's probably on every single computer that came out during the day. Let me know what your favorite version is. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.